In this video, we're just going to continue solving equations when x is in the exponent. But what we're going to do in this one is we're, we're going to apply our, our exponent laws, uh, predominantly the one that says if I have x to the power of a and I'm multiplying by x to the power of b, I know that I can add those exponents uh, because my bases are the same. This is the main exponent law that we're going to apply in, in this video lesson to solve these exponential equations. Okay, so in these problems, we just have sort of an extra step, very similar to the problems that we saw in the last video lesson. I've put watch out here. A lot of you are going to be tempted to just kind of expand the three into the brackets here. That's actually not going to give you the correct solution for x. The reason for that is what I'm doing here is I'm actually raising two to the power of x plus one and then multiplying by three. That's something entirely different than doing three times two to get six to the power of x plus one. So what we actually have to do is divide three out first. Okay, first step. So if I divide both sides by three, I've got rid of that three on the left-hand side, uh, and I've got 48 over three on the right-hand side. Okay, well, I know 48 over three to be 16. And at this point, what we have is a problem that's very similar to the last video lesson. Okay, you'll remember that we have to take this number and write it as a base of two in order to solve for x here. Okay, so I know that 16 is two to the power of four. And at this point, I can sort of just neglect my bases. The bases do not influence this x at all at this point. Okay, so that's sort of the next step is just to look at the exponents. Okay, so if I solve for x here, I get x equals three. Okay, so pretty much the same as what we did in the last video lesson, but we have this extra step here. Okay, so let's do another one. Uh, this one here, exactly the same concept. I'm gonna divide both sides by 27. So I get three over 27. That's just one over nine. And this is a very similar example to what we saw in the other video lesson where I can rewrite one over nine as three to the power of negative two. Uh, there is an exponent law which allows me to do that. If I have a to the power of some negative x, I know that to be one over a to the x. And at this point, I'm at the same uh, spot as in my other example where I can sort of just focus on my exponents here. So I can solve for x here just by moving one over to the other side, uh, dividing both sides by three to get negative one here. So let's look at these ones here. This guy, uh, there's, you can see I'm, I'm adding two, two separate bases here. A lot of you are gonna feel inclined to add two and two and get four. Okay, you're not gonna do that here. That's not gonna give you a correct answer. What I'm going to ask you to do here is actually use that exponent line I was talking about at the beginning where, you know, I said if I have x to the power of a plus b, I know that that's the same thing as x to the power of a times x to the power of b. So this first piece, I know that I can write this as 2 to the power of x times 2 to the power of 1 from this law right here. Okay, I can break this up into a product of powers. Right? A lot of you are used to going this way. I would give you something like this and you would simplify it this way. We're just going backwards here. Okay, and I can do the same thing for this one. I can break that into two to the power of x times two to the power of two. Looking at this thing, you know, I can tell there's a common factor here of two to the power of x. I'm gonna common factor that out. I'm taking two to the power of x out of each term and this is what I have left. Now, I know that two to the power of one is two and two to the power of two is four. So if I had four and two, I get six. So what I've got is, is six times two to the power of x. And I'm just kind of rewriting that in a form that we're used to. Okay, so my next step here is very similar to the last couple problems we looked at. Remember, I want to divide out this six first. 96 divided by six is 16. We know that we can, we can rewrite 16 as a base of two. So that was sort of the trick there, making sure that we understand this exponent law. So let's let's look at this one. Very, very similar problem. Two bases, but we're subtracting this time. I'm going to apply this, this exponent law again. I know that I can break this up into 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 3. And I can subtract, using the same law here, 3 to the power of x times 3 squared. And that's going to be equal to 2. So right away, some of you are thinking, well, there's no way I can write 2 as a base of 3. Uh, but stuff's definitely going to happen here that's going to help us with that. Um, remember, I can common factor 3 to the power of x out here. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That leaves me with 3 cubed, and I'm still subtracting 3 squared here. 3 cubed is 27, and I'm subtracting 9. 
That's just going to give me 18. So I'm going to write it again like this. I've got 18 times 3 to the x. I just switched those. I can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, I'm still multiplying here. Remember, I just do that because it's familiar to us, right? We're used to seeing it written like this. Okay, so at this point, I can divide both sides by 18, which reduces to 1 over 9. All right, we can take 1 over 9 and write that as 3 to the power of negative 2. And then at this point, I've got common bases. So I can just sort of ignore those bases and solve for my, my x value, which is negative 2. So hopefully this face has turned into this face. Okay, so our last example here, looking at it, you know, you're thinking, wow, like, like is that a, is that a, like a, a quadratic function in the exponent? And absolutely it is. Um, what we're dealing with is trinomial exponents here. We're still solving for x. These things are not as complicated as they look. So, you know, in, in most cases, our, our primary goal is to get the base to be the same. In this case, we already have two and two. Those are the same base, right? So we can, we can sort of just neglect those bases and, and focus on the exponents. So this is actually kind of like a factoring problem in disguise. My goal here is to solve for x. I want to collect all my like terms first. So that, that involves me bringing everything over to the, the left-hand side. So I've got x squared. I've got 2x. And remember, I'm subtracting x over here. So that leaves me with 1x. I'm subtracting 6 over to the other side. Like I said, this is really just a factoring problem in disguise. I'm going to find two numbers that add to give me the coefficient in front of the middle term and including the sign. So I need to add to get 1. And I also need to multiply to get to negative 6. So let's try negative 2 and multiply that by 3. That'll give us negative 6. If I take negative 2 and I add 3, well, look at that. I get 1. Okay, so both of my conditions are, are satisfied, which means that these must be the numbers that I need. Okay, negative 2 and 3. Once I've done all this work off to the side, I can take this number and put it there, and I take that number there and I put it here. And remember, the signs matter, so bring the signs with them. Okay, well, I know that because the product of these two brackets is equal to 0, I can, I can kind of just deconstruct each piece here and say... Uh, well, I know x minus 2 could be equal to 0, and I also want to look at when x plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, so I'm solving two separate equations here. Right, I can just bring 2 over to the other side, I get x equals 2. And if I bring 3 over to the other side, I get x equals negative 3. Okay, so in this case, I actually have two values which make this exponential equation true, which makes sense because, remember, I have like a quadratic here. Okay, so I'm going to have two x values which make this true.